In this video, I'm going to show you just how easy it is to install a downpipe and an air intake on this F22 M235i. Now this DIY is going to be very similar for the F30 and 55 engines as well. And just overall, the F chassis is just so easy to mod. And I understand why everybody's appealed to getting these cars, because just within a moment of hours, you can literally just download some horsepower from your phone with these supporting mods. Let's just get right to it, and I'm going to show you how easy it really is. The intake that we went with is a Burger Motorsports intake. It's one of the best bang for buck mods, honestly. You don't need to really go out there and spend all that extra money on carbon fiber intake or whatnot. This one's cheap, and it gets the job done. Now, the downpipe we went with is a VRSF catted downpipe. And all we really need to do is we're going to need a gasket for right here uh, for where it attaches to the turbo. You honestly, you might be able to reuse your gasket, but I highly recommend replacing it. And I'll have all this stuff linked down below. The only thing we really need to transfer over are going to be the O2 sensors. And I'll have all this stuff linked down below in the description. We're going to replace the downpipe first. In order to do that, we do need to remove the O2 sensors. So we're going to take off this cover so we can get to the O2 sensors. This cover is just held in with a couple of grommets. It lifts right up. There's no screws or bolts. We'll start at the front. Go to the back corner. This back corner as well. Now you can see there's this foam heat protectant. We're going to lift that up because the O2 sensors are right underneath there. Here are the two O2 sensors that we need to remove. We're just going to release them from the clip. There's one, the one in the back as well. And on the bottom side, you can see there's this gray tab. We're going to pull the gray tab out and then push it down. And then you can lift off the connector. Here's on this one again. You push the gray tab out first with your fingernail. Then you push it down and then you pull them apart. Now make sure you're pulling by the connectors and not by the wires. And you can see how they're color coded. The blue one goes to the blue O2 sensor. The black one goes to the black one. Now we're gonna follow these O2 sensors down and they are clipped onto the side of a heat shield. So we just wanna unclip them. That way it makes it easier to pull it off from the bottom. This is gonna be really hard to show, but I'll try to show the clip from underneath. So there's a clip right here and you just pull the wires out of it. You'll be able to feel it. You can see it a little bit right here where I'm bouncing it back and forth. And then on the gray O2 sensor connector, you're going to go further back and you're going to feel another clip on the very corner of the engine, almost near the bell housing of the transmission. I might be able to show you that one from the bottom better. Now here are the clips that I was talking about and that's where the O2 sensors reside. This clip right here and that one right there. They're both on the heat shield and they just protect that O2 sensor wiring from touching the exhaust and melting. Now that we're underneath the car, we're gonna remove the plastic covers. They're just held in with a bunch of eight millimeter screws. So you just wanna follow around, just take them all out for this one cover and then the whole cover will just drop down. You don't need to remove these four or these two. The way I like to do this, I like to take all the screws from all the way around. Now you have the front section being tucked into the bumper. Their back section is completely clear. So I leave these two in the middle at, for the very, very last. That way you can support it and you're not just having everything falling around or you don't have to worry about stressing any of the plastic components. Now you just bring it down and slide it toward the back of the car. To make it a little bit easier to get to some of the bolts for the downpipe, we're going to remove this transmission cover as well. You're going to have one 10 millimeter nut all the way in the back. Now this is a plastic nut and the rest are going to be the same style eight millimeter screws around the perimeter. Now the trick to this, there's a bracket right here, a metal bracket right next to the exhaust and we're going to have to twist the cover so it releases it. Now once it lines up with the opening, then you just pop it out. It looks like somebody left us an oil filter O-ring. <laughs> now the next step, we're actually going to disassemble some of the exhaust. Now you could remove the entire exhaust if you're going to be upgrading it anyways. We're not, so what we're going to do is we're going to disconnect the whole front half, remove this rear bar, and then we're going to let the exhaust dangle. Now if you're doing this at home, you might, if you have it on jack stands, you can just let the exhaust rest on the ground. 
To remove this rear brace, you're going to have two T60 bolts, one on each corner, and then you're going to have six T50 bolts in the middle. I already got it loosened. You guys know the drill if you've been watching me long enough. We still don't got that Milwaukee sponsorship, so we're rocking with this underpowered rigid. I know I can get a more powerful rigid too, but this rigid has been very rigid for me. It's lasted me this long. I already loosened these two, don't worry. Bam. Now, if you're gonna remove the rest of the exhaust on this whole car, it's super simple. You have one more 13 millimeter hex nut right here. You have a connector for the exhaust valve. And then on the other side, same thing, you have one more 13 millimeter hex nut. And then whatever we take off from the front, this whole exhaust will just drop down. But we're not gonna do that. We're just gonna try to leave it dangling, see what happens. Ding-a-lang. We'll start off by removing this bracket that attaches to the transmission cross member. It's held in with two external Torx 10 bolts. That was easy. Rigid was up to the task for this one. This is the V-band clamp that's holding the exhaust to the downpipe. It's just a 16 millimeter nut. And then we're gonna release the V-band. That'll open up the clamp and then this should be free. Might wanna hold the exhaust on this one. And swing it down and we're just gonna leave it right there actually. Now I'll pull the clamp off all the way, just separate it from the middle and it'll work itself off. We're also gonna remove this metal crossbar that goes across, just a support for that plastic undershield. Two more eight millimeter screws. We're gonna remove this 13 millimeter bolt and the 13 millimeter nut on the top. That's how it looks. There's the nut. Now we're gonna remove the 13 millimeter V-band clamp that's holding the downpipe to the turbo. I'm pretty sure this car used to have a downpipe on here before because that V-band is awfully loose. Loose enough where my rigid would have handled it for sure. If I could reach. Now there's a washer and then there's the bolt that goes through the V-band clamp. Now we're gonna separate the clamp and the downpipe should just release. Now I got the V-band clamp released. What you can do is you can go with this long screwdriver from right here and lightly tap on the section that's stuck. Now we're gonna transfer over the O2 sensors. You wanna make sure you do this one at a time so you don't get them mixed up. And don't touch the tip. Now what you could do is you could put some copper grease on this um, just so that way it doesn't get corroded to this. On to the next one. Now here are the clips that I was talking about and that's where the O2 sensors reside. This clip right here and that one right there. They're both on the heat shield and they just protect that O2 sensor wiring from touching the exhaust and melting. So this gasket might be able to be reused, but it's only like 15 to 20 bucks. We're just gonna go ahead and change it out. You can see how the old one's compressed compared to the new one. That V-band clamp is gonna pretty, it's gonna seal pretty well, and this gas is gonna help do it even better. So we're just gonna put this new one, it'll compress and conform to any imperfections in the casting or anything like that. It'll make sure it's making a nice and tight seal. Now we've got the new downpipe ready to go. O2 sensors are nice and tight. What we're gonna do, we're just gonna line it up, get the V-band clamp around both flanges, get the bolt, the 13 millimeter bolt, start hand threading it in just until it holds it tight enough. We still wanna twist this around, but for the time being, we just want it held up so it doesn't fall out. 
Now this downpipe doesn't have any of the brackets to secure it to the factory location for the bracket. So we're not gonna have to worry about any of that. All right, let's route it in there. Before we tighten that V-band clamp, we're gonna put the rest of the exhaust together as well. And then we can route that, make sure if we need to twist the downpipe at all, we can do all of that. So I'm gonna put this V-band clamp on the downpipe first. Then we can start routing the exhaust back on there. With this V-band loosely on there, we can start putting the screws back on the mount that's in the middle of this exhaust. These are external Torx 10, and there's two of them, one in the front, one in the back. And they attach to the transmission cross member. So now we got to start tightening all these clamps up. You wanna make sure they're oriented where they're not gonna hit anything. You also wanna make sure the downpipe is not gonna hit anywhere on these brackets or anything like that. And then we can go ahead and secure the V-band on the very front of the downpipe as well as this back one. So this back one is a size 16. And the front one is a size 13. So it might be easier to route those oxygen sensor wiring into those brackets from down here if you have long skinny arms like me. I was able to do that. Otherwise, you have to do it from the top and you just have to feel for it. So you can see how I did it right here. Now we can put the brace back on. You have the two T60s on each corner. And then you have the six T50s in the middle. You have this cross brace for that plastic under tray held in with two eight millimeter screws. Now when you're putting all these plastic under trays and these little eight millimeter screws, you don't want to use an impact or anything because they're so easy to strip, so do it by hand. Now I'm not going to put the rest of these covers back on because we're doing more work on this car, but you get the idea. You want to first put this transmission cover on, you want to slide it into this bracket first, and then you twist it. Line it up, you have one 10 millimeter plastic nut back here, and then you have a couple of eight millimeter screws that go around the perimeter. Then you can put the plastic tray in the front. Now when you're putting the plastic tray in the front, you wanna slide the front section into this bumper area, and then lift it up. It should line up with all the bolt holes in the back, put the two in the middle, and then go around the perimeter. So now you want to route those O2 sensors back to the top here. We're going to plug in the black one first because it goes in the back. You should hear it click in and then you want to make sure you push that gray tab in to lock it in place. If you're having a hard time pushing it in, make sure you have this gray tab already lifted up first before you're trying to plug it in. Then you will hear it click in and then you want to lock it in place. And the gray tab's gonna be facing down towards the valve cover when you have it clipped in. Now you wanna just double check, make sure the O2 sensor wires are in those brackets properly and they're not gonna to be touching the exhaust anywhere. Now we just clip in the plastic cover back in place. Make sure you line up the grommets. Now we have the intake. We're going to loosen this six millimeter hose clamp to remove this whole factory intake. We're going to disconnect this sensor. Now this sensor is a little tricky because the tab that you push down is very, very tiny. So if you can't use your nail to get to it, use a flathead screwdriver and just get it lifted up. Now you want to be very careful because if this tab breaks, it's going to be a pain in the butt to get it to seat. One way to do it is you want to push it in while you're pushing the tab down. Ah, 
but you can see how thin it is right there. I mean, you can technically get like a pick in there and try to lift it up from this because it secures over this tab right here. But that's a little risky because if you crack that, then it's gonna be a pain in the butt to get to seat. Now we have this connector right here. You wanna push this tab and there's one underneath, push them together and you can see how it flares these two sections out. So push those two together and it pulls out. And now it's just easy. You just lift up. There might be some things in the way. Just keep moving around. Don't go crazy with it. You want to try to get it out of this section as well. Voila. Let's transfer over some sensors. We do need to transfer this sensor over to the Burger Motorsport intake. It's going to be held in with two T20 screws. And then you just yank it out. Now we just slide it into the Burger Motorsports intake. Feels a little loose in there, but there's an O-ring around it that's going to seal it. And this comes with Phillips screws. So the bottom section of the stock airbox is going to be reused. So we're going to remove it. We're not going to need this though. Look at all that dirt. Well, good thing that fell out because we're not going to use some of these either. So the only one that we need to keep is this one. So to remove these and slide them out from the bottom. Bam. Now I'm just going to slide this back in place. So this section right here, I'm going to make sure it lines up with this section and it clips into place. And you also have this peg right here that needs to go inside of this grommet. And you have this peg right here that needs to go inside this grommet. All the pegs are in, this section is clipped as well. Now we can put the intake on. If you look underneath, we have these two right here where there's supposed to be a bolt. Now they usually include the bolt in this kit. Our bolt is missing, so let me go find one and then I'll show you the bracket that's also included. It needs to attach to one of these and then it clips in to this. So I found a random bolt that I had laying around, or screw I should say. Oh, it's not long enough. Never heard that one before. <laughs> so I found a screw that will work. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and test fit it before I tighten this down. You see I have it threaded onto this hole right here. This two tabs are going to actually sit inside the air box. Now it's already there from factory. And this clip will clip onto this section right here to secure it in place. Now there is adjustability depending on what you want the height of the intake at and then you would just lock it down with these Allen screws right here. But first, let's get this orientation properly and lock that down. So I'm trying to get this clipped on to the Burger Motorsports bracket and the, the bracket's just not going deep enough into the air box. I don't want to force it in to, I don't want to break this air box. So, but it's in there nice and tight. I don't think it's going to go anywhere. So what we're going to do, we're just going to take this clip off as well. So now we've got the bracket slid in place. We're going to go ahead and secure this hose. You might have to use some silicone spray to lube it up a little bit. So it's not fully clipping in, but we're not going to force it because otherwise it is going to break off. I was able to get that hose clamped in all the way. Just takes a little bit more finesse and use more silicone spray. To clip this in, you just push it in place. Now we have the filter. And we're just going to tighten this up and red for plus 10 horsepower. Now we got to tighten down this six millimeter hose clamp. And just like that, the intake is installed, the downpipe is installed. Now we just got to download some horsepower from our phone directly to the DME. So that you can use a couple of tunes. There's a couple of apps that you can use. I'll have all of that stuff linked down below. Um, we're probably going to make a separate video on that. 
as of right now, everything else is attached. Now there are a couple of things with this air intake that you want to be sure of. I was able to get that hose clamped in all the way. Just takes a little bit more finesse and use more silicone spray. Now another thing, there's a grommet right here in the center. Now you want, you want to make sure that the intake sits inside that grommet and it, the lip of it goes inside of it. And that's just going to make sure that it doesn't rattle, it doesn't move around. And then the final thing, you want to make sure you tighten up the clamp for the air intake, tighten up the clamp for the intake tube, and also there's two four millimeter hex or Allen key screws that, that adjust the height of that bracket. Make sure you have those tightened down as well. You don't want those just falling into the engine. Besides that, everything else fits pretty good. I mean, we didn't get that bracket on there like how Burger Motorsports want us to use that, their bracket with the clip from the stock air box. So we just took that off, but everything is perfect. I mean, it's not going anywhere and it's not rattling or anything like that. That's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys have any questions, make sure to leave a comment down below. We'll have the torque specs and all of that in the description as always, and all the parts will be in the description. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you guys in our next one.